welcome back to another video. I thought I'd do the old Codemasters for the Amstrad CPC. Yeah, hope you guys are all keeping well. So yeah, I decided to collect the Codemasters series on the Amstrad. Because I don't really collect much for that particular system. And I thought, as I do have Amstrad content in my collection, it'd be nice to get a couple of videos out which are linked to the system, to be fair. I always find that when making, making videos, it's, try, it's quite difficult to try and showcase different collections. You don't, don't have the time to do it, do you, really? So I chose to go for the Codemaster set. I was fortunate enough about six months ago to pick up a nice bundle which contained a lot of the more difficult standalone tapes. I was also gifted a remarkable item from a fellow YouTuber, which I will disclose who that would be when I get that to that particular video. But yeah, that was a massive boost. Uh, to me actually wanting to go and get a full set. Um, so I think I'm around about 50 to 60 titles. I'm not sure how many games got a release on the Amstrad Codemasters range. I reckon it's around 100. So it's very similar size to, say, the Hit Squad. Um, I like the Hit Squad. They released games right up until sort of 1993. I think some of the last games to feature in any magazine back in the day, especially on the Spectrum, were busy games or other games by Coke Masters. So yeah. I don't have a lot of nostalgia for the label. I played a few games back in the day. The Spectrum, I do have all the games I want, which are nostalgic and a particular set of games I wanted to have. A set of games I never played before. So yeah, I decided just to stick to the Amstrad, nothing else. But I do believe the Commodore 64 range is bigger. They did continue to make games for a bit longer. And there are some very difficult to get compilations on the Commodore 64 and indeed the Sinclair Spectrum. I don't think the Amstrad has all those difficult compilations to go for. So yeah, so I have committed myself to it now. So I need to get the last few games to finish the set off. And I, I'm not under any illusions like Hitchcock. It could take quite some time to pick them up, to be honest. But yeah, I'll go through it in the same style I did with the Hit Squads. We'll just go through sort of 10 games per video. A lot of the games here, will be quite familiar to you. Some are very, one of them in particular is very famous. Um, but they are a mixture predominantly of budget games, as in cheap games. There are some full price releases. Um, there are some kind of half full price releases. There's one particular release on the Amstrad that is one of the rarest items you're going to pick up full stop. An item that wasn't released in the shops, but was given away, I think, as a gift from the Sun newspaper. I think it was to celebrate a particular game's release. Um, featuring a famous headline from the Sun newspaper, I believe. But again, very few of those actually exist. I don't know if any have been discovered on the Amstrad. But again, we get to that when I get that particular game. Not the rare one, but the easier to find variant into the collection. But yeah. So where do we begin? We begin with probably one of the more famous franchises on the Codemasters label. In fact, it is the most famous franchise. Probably even more so than the Simulator range. That is Dizzy. Um, I'm not sure what all the fuss is about the Dizzy games. Um, I do like the odd arcade adventure, I won't lie. I enjoyed the Magic Knight series on the on Master Trek label. The problem I have with the Dizzy games, unless you've got an imagination that's quite similar to that of, of the Oliver Twins, you're going to struggle because it's almost like you're trying to work out their puzzles. Obviously, it's their game, isn't it? It's going to be their puzzles. But you, do you know what I mean? You've got to have the same mindset as them to work out what the hell to do. Because it can be a little bit trippy in places. You can't work out what on earth to do. Graphically, it's a nice game. It's one of those flip screen scrolling games. You just got to pick up objects to get other objects to do something different. But yeah, I, I yeah, missed this completely back in the day, and there's quite a few Dizzy games. It's own little subset. There's actually, what, two compilations. There's a, a big box game, or medium box game. Why is it a small box game? I can't remember. And a multitude of other spin-offs as well. So yeah, it's quite a fair size of the Codemasters set. Um, I would like to persevere. I mean, I played one of them on the Amiga and actually quite enjoyed it once I got used to it. But this one in particular, I thought was quite difficult. Even though it's not a big game from what I've heard. Now with the Codemasters, again, like the, the Hitchcock label, it's got a very nice um, 
all the games got matching spines, so it, it all looks pretty cool. Even though there's different sizes in cases and all the rest of it, but it's quite a nice set. One of the very few uniform sets you can pick up on the 8-bit micros. Yeah, that's dizzy. Then we got first of the compilations. Now this particular range of compilations, again, there's got to be at least a dozen titles for this. Um, I'm assuming these were released at $199, $299. That is for Quattro Power. Again, there are one or two that came out quite late and are quite difficult to find. Um, looking at this particular bunch of games, I don't believe I've played any of them before. We've got Motocross, Pro Power Boat, ATV Simulator, and the one I did play for footage for this video was Twin Turbo V8, which is quite an attractive-ish looking driving game. Got some nice big sprites. I found it quite difficult because sometimes when you're kind of on the brow of a hill, I suppose like in real life, you can't see what the hell's going on. And the old corners can be a little bit too tight, but yeah, for, for a budget game though, for a budget racer, it's not bad at all. Apparently got a great review, 95% in Oracle. I have no idea what Oracle even was. Oracle, is that on ITV, like the old CFAX thing? I don't know. But yeah, so most of these four quattro thingamajigs are relatively easy to find and cheap. The next one is a shoot 'em up. Now, this is a game I've never played before until doing this video. And that game is. Transmuter. I've got to say, this is a very, very poor shoot 'em up. But again, with Codemasters, they do tend to write inside the inlays the, person, the person's name who made the games. It just says graphics by James Wilson. So clearly the programmer doesn't matter. But yeah, it's, it's a very slow paced shooter. It's quite got quite juddery graphics. It's quite a weak game, I've got to say. Uh, I probably would have been disappointed with it back in the day, even though it would only cost $1.99. Ian Richards. Right, Ian Richards done, done the game. James Wilson done the graphics. But yeah, not a fan of this game, I've got to say. The weakest one I've played thus far in the Codemasters set. Again, quite cheap and cheerful. Most games are in the Codemasters range, they're quite cheap. They don't come up as often as you might expect them to come up, especially for the Amstrad. Then we've got another one, which uh, I've got a feeling I need to replace this. It's a little bit sun faded, I think. This game is called... <laughs> Necrous Dome. Um, never heard of it before. Uh, and it is a text adventure. Quite an early one by the looks of it. Um, as with most text adventures, I play it for about five minutes and get fed up. Unless you write all the commands down on a piece of paper, you're never going to remember them. Half the time you bloody misspell them and yeah, it just gets in your tits, doesn't it? But yeah, an exciting new graphic adventure game contains a unique, interesting storyline, which will really stretch your imagination. With excellent graphics and playability, a good challenge. What kind of gunk you would expect to be on the back of a budget game, really. They've got to try and sell it somehow, ain't they? But yeah, I, I don't know if this game ever came out on anything else, or, or on any other label, but personally, I didn't like it. The next one, I believe I actually had this back in the day. Digitized voice sy synthesis. Right, our game is Grand Prix Simulator. Um, it's a decent game. On a spectrum, I really enjoyed it, even though it's one of those top down driving games. The Amstrad version is quite hard. Not as hard as a racing game I played a bit later, but it's quite hard. Uh, another game by Oliver and Philip. I should say Philip and Andrew Oliver. Get it straight. But yeah, it's uh, I, I found it quite challenging. And the cars, unfortunately, don't look particularly nice, do they? Just like boxy cars with a window on them. But yeah, I was unimpressed with this version of the game, even though I used to quite enjoy the specy version back in the day. It's okay. And the fact it's got speech in it, which was quite impressive, to be fair. I'm sure they've done the speech themselves, the, the brothers, but yeah, it was, it was a decent effort. 
definitely the first game I got fond memories of, to be fair. And we're going to buy that as well. Um, right. Next up, we have one of those Dizzy... Well, one for the Dizzy franchise, but it's not the same as the arcade adventures that you're used to. This game is called... Fast Food. Now, this is one of the better games in this set of ten I'm going to show you. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like laid out like Pac-Man, if you like. You gotta go and eat the food. You pick up certain power-ups that help you on your quest to complete the levels. Um, I'm not sure what happens with the baddies. The baddies are food themselves, aren't they? So yeah, I couldn't quite work out what you had to avoid. But you end up eating everything, and that's the end of the level, really. So yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't get very far, and I got far enough to get an extra life. I think there's about the fourth or fifth screen. Um, but I quite enjoyed it. Again, very well presented. Nice graphics. Um, bit of speech. Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed that game. I think it's good value for money. But there's a number of games like this which aren't directly linked to Dizzy, but do use the Dizzy franchise. Now, next up is a bit of a later release. Uh, this one, I think, by the looks of it, was a bit of a Spectrum port. That game is... Captain Dynamo. Again, never played this before. But I, I found it to be a very slow platformer. Just make your way up the platforms, obviously avoiding the baddies and picking up... I'm not sure if they were diamonds. I can't remember now. Yeah. I, I, it was alright. It's just too slow. I thought it was very slow. Uh, again, not sure who wrote this game. Super sound effects. Madcap mayhem. Mega platform action. But yeah, it's not quite as mega as it makes out. But it's um, it's alright. Again, not sure when this game came out. It looked like quite a late release. I'm trying to find out who made it. Doesn't say on this one. Yeah, it's, it's alright. I would like to play the Spectrum version though, so I bet the Spectrum version probably runs quite, well, quite a bit quicker. Yeah, quite a late release, that one. Um, the last of the small cassettes I've got to show you is a game called... Frankenstein Junior. Part of this uh, Cartoon Time label. Now, I don't believe there's many Cartoon Time games. I think there's only four. I think I've got three of them. But I can never remember the fourth one, to be honest. Now, this game here has got some rather large graphics. I just found it bloody hard. Kind of roaming around a mansion, by the looks of it. Going through different doors to try to get through to different levels. Being chased around by a ghost, which happens to sort of stick to you and drain your energy. So it's quite annoying trying to get away from them. Um... Oh, sorry, sorry. It, it seemed like quite a disinteresting game. But again, I couldn't get very far in it. I just went through multiple doors, got a bit bored, and turned it off. But yeah, the Cartoon Time collection is generally um, rel well, relatively easy to pick up. Yes, and then we move on to a larger cased game. There's not many of these, as far as I'm aware. Maybe three, I think. First one I got is a game called... Jet bike simulator. Um, this is brutal. It is bloody hard. It plays identical to say Grand Prix Simulator. But obviously you're on jet bikes. Um, graphically it was okay. It just was very difficult to play. You've almost got to have a flawless run to get through each level. Which a game like this and the speed it kind of runs at is very difficult to achieve. Now these games come on two cassettes. They usually come with a poster. They come with a sticker, which unfortunately mine doesn't have either. Um, I'm trying to get a budget game. This would have been, what, 4 99 probably. But, but trying to get this complete with what you need to get a complete copy is nigh on impossible. Um, you've got two tapes with multiple different courses on there. I'm not sure. Actually, yes, this game did come out in a smaller dual case. But again, done by... The Oliver Twins. And David Whittaker done a lot of music, didn't he, for some of these games. It's nice to hear the AY renditions of the tunes I used to hear 
on a spectrum from the old beeper chip. Bruce Everest is an imagined guy, wasn't he? Plus concept. Programming, music, music by John Paul Eldridge, and illustration Gavin McLeod. There we go. So yeah, not a good game, i.e. it's bloody hard. Now it might just be the course I played, I don't know, maybe there's some easier courses, but again, features the usual Oliver Twin stuff, the speech, quite nice graphics, and brutally hard gameplay. I believe at the moment that's the only one I have from the set. There's two more games, one more like that, which I believe is BMX Simulator, it's like an expanded version. And the other one is Race Against Time. There's two variants on the Spectrum, probably two variants on the Amstrad. Um, I have both on the Spectrum, but I don't have any of them on the Amstrad. Yeah. And finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is one of the box compilations. Now, again, I don't know how many of these came out on the Amstrad. On the Spectrum, there's loads. So this is the cartoon collection. This is a nice compilation. Um, there's two other compilations I would like um, that are like this. One I think is the Dizzy Collection. And there's another Dizzy compilation that's the same sort of thing. One's red, one's blue, I think. And you've got other compilations. Again, I don't know if the Super Seymour compilation came out on the Amstrad. Uh, I'm not sure if the All Stars compilation came out on the Amstrad. I don't think I've ever seen the CD before on the Amstrad. Um, and there's a couple of very late compilations I've only ever seen. Um, on the Spectrum Commodore 64, to be honest, but they're very, very hard to find. Uh, but yeah, this one contains Dizzy, which you've already seen Dizzy, CJ's Elephant Antics, Slightly Magic, which I think is the game I've played for this video. Now, that was again another sort of arcade adventure. Quite a big platformer. Took me a little while to work out what to do. That's one of the dragons in, isn't it? I'm sure I'm trying to think because I did the, the gameplay footage before I did this video. Um, by, by sort of like a week ago, so my memory's a little crap. But I'm pretty sure it's the one where you've got to give the dragon water to cool them down. If you walk past a dragon if you haven't given them water, they burn you. Spike in Transylvania. Which I've got a feeling may be another cartoon time game. And Seymour. Uh, goes to Hollywood. Seymour goes to Hollywood. I think the Seymour Stuntman, that's quite a difficult one to get, isn't it? And Seymour Sergeant Robot Cop. I think that is the top one to buy. Quite a tough one to get, to be fair. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that is all I've got so far from... Well, to show you this particular episode. I've never really spent a lot of time on most of these games, but I do like fast food. I did enjoy playing that. Grand Prix, I've got a lot of fond memories on, on the Synchro Spectrum. But the rest of the games, to be honest, I don't have much nostalgia for at all. Like I said before, if you haven't got any nostalgia for some of these old games, it can be quite difficult to get into. But yeah, so thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care, and bye for now.